It was one of the most devastating pandemics in human history, a cataclysm that has haunted our collective memory for centuries. A deadly, invisible killer swept across continents in the mid-14th century, leaving behind a world reshaped by grief and terror. It moved with terrifying speed, leaving millions of corpses, shattered families, and societies on the brink of collapse. Known as the Great Mortality, the Great Pestilence, and most enduringly, the Black Death, this mysterious plague killed an estimated 50 to 60 percent of Europe's population between 1347 and 1353. For over 600 years, scholars, scientists, and historians have been gripped by a single haunting question. Where did it all begin? What was the original spark that ignited this world-altering inferno? The answer remained one of history's greatest and most chilling mysteries. And now, thanks to the convergence of 19th century archaeology, DNA science, and the work of a few determined researchers, we finally have an answer. The story does not begin in the plague pits of London or the panicked ports of Italy. It starts with a simple slab of stone in the mountains of Central Asia, etched with a single chilling word, pestilence. In the summer of 1886, a team of Russian archaeologists was conducting excavations at two small cemeteries near the village of Karajigach, close to the northern shores of Lake Isik Kul in what is now Kyrgyzstan. They unearthed the graves of a local community, a Nestorian Christian trading settlement that had thrived on a branch of the Silk Road. They uncovered dozens of stone-marked graves dated to the years 1338 and 1339, a crucial detail, as this was nearly a full decade before the Black Death was first recorded arriving in Europe. Among the gravestones was an inscription in ancient Syriac that read, This is the tomb of the believer Sanmak. He died of pestilence. The word stood out, pestilence. In medieval times, this was a vague but deeply ominous term, a catch-all for any horrific disease that could wipe out a community. The original archaeologists noted their findings, took records, and brought the skeletal remains back to Russia for storage. But then, like so many historical clues, the evidence was filed away and largely forgotten, sitting in the archives of a St. Petersburg museum for more than a century. In recent years, a medieval historian named Philip Slavin, based at the University of Stirling in Scotland, stumbled upon these old records while researching the economic and environmental history of the Black Death. He was struck by an anomaly in the data. He re-examined the field notes, diaries, and maps from the 1886 excavation. He discovered that San Mac was not alone. In just a two-year span, from 1338 to 1339, over 118 individuals from this small trading community had died and been buried, with a large number of tombstones explicitly mentioning pestilence. This was not a coincidence. This was a massive localized mortality crisis. He was almost 100% certain it was the beginning of the Black Death, but there was no way to prove it, at least not without DNA. A historian's conviction, however strong, is not scientific proof. To bridge that gap, he would need to find a way to reach back across eight centuries and test the very remains of the dead. Enter paleogeneticists at the Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology in Germany. When they heard Slavin present his findings, their reaction was immediate. This could be it. This could be the source. Their team was already deep in the hunt for the plague's origin. They had been building a massive genetic family tree for the plague bacterium, Yersinia pestis, by collecting and sequencing over 1,300 samples from both modern and ancient sources, including rodents and human victims from across the globe, they had made a critical discovery. Their data revealed that in the early 14th century, the bacterium underwent a big bang of diversification. From a single ancestral strain, four new major lineages of plague suddenly burst into existence. One of those four lineages was the one responsible for the Black Death in Europe and all subsequent outbreaks for the next 400 years. The geneticists knew this mother strain did not arise in Europe because the strains found in Black Death victims there already differed by one or two mutations. The European strains were clearly descendants, not the original ancestor. The true origin had to be somewhere else. A collaboration began between Slavin and Russian researchers at the Peter the Great Museum, where the Karajegash skulls had been stored since the 1880s. The team extracted DNA from the teeth of seven individuals, ideal for preservation, as the dental pulp inside can retain traces of blood-borne pathogens for centuries. The results were breathtaking. In the DNA extracted from three of the seven individuals, they found the unmistakable genetic signature of Yersinia pestis. The team had its smoking gun. The pestilence of 1338 was, indeed, the plague. Even more stunning was what came next. After sequencing the ancient bacterium's full genome, they compared it to their global family tree of plague strains. What they found was a perfect match. 
The strain from the 1338 A.D. Kyrgyzstan victims was not just a plague strain, it was the ancestral strain. It sat at the exact point of origin for that Big Bang event. It was the mother of them all. They had found the ground zero of the Black Death. With the time and place of origin now confirmed, the next question was how? How did this bacterium, living quietly in its animal hosts, suddenly leap into the human population with such deadly force? This is a process known as zoonotic spillover. The region around Lake Isik-Kul, nestled in the Tian Shan Mountains, is a natural plague reservoir. This means the bacterium naturally and continuously circulates among vast populations of wild rodents, such as marmots, great gerbils, and voles. The researchers propose that a sudden change in climate, perhaps unusually warm and wet springs, caused the local vegetation to flourish. This, in turn, would have led to a population boom among the rodents. More rodents meant more fleas carrying Yersinia pestis. This crowded, thriving ecosystem created a perfect storm of opportunity for the bacterium to jump to a new host, the humans living and trading in the area. A marmot, hunted for its meat or fur, could have been the initial bridge. The final piece of the puzzle was the journey. How did this localized outbreak travel over 3,500 kilometers from a quiet mountain graveyard to the bustling ports of the Black Sea, where it made its infamous European debut? The graves themselves offered the final clues. Slavin's meticulous research noted that many of the people buried in Karajigach were interred with goods from far-off lands, pearls from the Indian Ocean, coins from Iran, and other artifacts from across the Mediterranean. They were not isolated villagers. They were traders part of the interconnected network of the Silk Road. Probably, their camel caravans, laden with goods, were traveling west. Hidden within the cargo or among the traveler's belongings were likely black rats, and on those rats were infected fleas. These caravans became vessels of contagion, carrying the plague from one settlement to the next, in a slow and invisible march of death across Central Asia. Eventually, this deadly chain reaction reached the Crimean Peninsula and the besieged port city of Kaffa in 1346. There, historical accounts describe the Mongol army catapulting the corpses of their own plague victims over the city walls, one of the earliest and most horrifying examples of biological warfare. The Black Plague then spread rapidly from Kaffa to Europe via Genoese trading ships carrying infected black rats and their fleas. Europe was particularly vulnerable due to a recent explosion in its rat population. Densely populated and unsanitary medieval cities provided an ideal habitat for these rodents, creating perfect conditions for the disease to devastate the continent. This discovery transforms a forgotten cemetery in Kyrgyzstan into the epicenter of one of humanity's darkest chapters. It reveals how a microscopic bacterium, born in the rugged wilderness of Central Asia, altered the course of civilization. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, don't forget to like, subscribe, and explore more discoveries that continue to reshape our understanding of the world. Until next time.